Hi, Lily here is 31 years old. Larry, who is nine years my senior, recently married me. Let us, however, briefly go back. Allow me to chronicle the day Larry and I first crossed paths. It was one of those elegant garden parties our folks enjoy organizing. Larry was 29, the young rising star in his father's business. I was 20, fresh out of high school. I recall him strolling up to me carrying a champagne glass. Lily Wright, he asked, his voice as silk. I've heard plenty about you. Blushing, I knew not what to say. And you are Larry. I have also heard much about you too. His laughter set my heart skipping a beat. Hopefully all good things, he said. Talking, joking, and to my surprise, connecting in a way I hadn't imagined, we stayed late into the evening. When our parents saw us together that evening, they began considering our marriage prospects. Though it took some more years, their idea proved successful finally. We signed a prenuptial agreement before our marriage. It was simple, should one of us cheat, the other may call off the marriage and leave with seven million dollars. Having no intention of cheating, I signed it without thinking twice. That day, we signed that deal comes back to me concerned. My dad, a guy a few words but great heart, looked at me. Are you sure, Lily, you're good with this? His voice firm but with a trace of anxiety he questioned. Dad, it's good, I said swiftly hugging him. Larry trusts me and he trusts you too. This is only formal. Larry was there as well, he insisted on signing the paperwork. I want you not to feel under pressure, Lily, he added, his voice sounding a little stiff. We can talk further about it if you're not comfortable with this. I merely shook my head, though, and grinned at him. Larry, I'm good with it, I said. I trust you. He gave me a nice smile and appeared relieved. And I trust you, Lily. That marked our path forward together. Everyone remarked about our great wedding, which we had. Starting this new chapter in my life thrilled me, totally ignorant of the storm approaching my life. We settled into a lovely house just outside the city following the wedding. Living with Larry and waking next to him every morning seemed like a dream come true. He was kind, gentle, and for a period everything appeared ideal. Our honeymoon felt as though it were from a fairy tale. Three weeks at a stunning beach resort, we lounged in the sun and delighted each other's company. Still, things started to alter when we got home. Larry changed and started to live always in contemplation. From work he would arrive home late and head straight to bed without even bidding goodnight. We started sleeping in separate rooms, eating at different times, and hardly speaking with one another. I decided one day to approach him, trying to keep my voice steady. Larry, I asked, what's going on? Ever since our honeymoon, you have been acting unusual. He turned to face me, his eyes no longer glowing the way they had been. Avoiding eye contact, he answered, I've just been busy with work, Lily. But we seldom speak anymore, I said. We live in our own house like strangers. He sighed and pushed his fingers through his hair. I understand, lie, I'm ashamed. I'll attempt to allot up more time for us. Not anything changed, though. Actually, things started to get bad. Larry began arriving home even later, sometimes even until early morning. We hardly saw each other and he stopped dining with me. I started to second-guess things. Was he watching someone else? Though I couldn't ignore the symptoms, the idea made me nauseous. I choose to face him once more. One evening when Larry came home late, I asked him, Are you seeing someone else? He seemed startled by my inquiry. What? Not sure, Lily. I never would treat you in this way. Then why do you always leave? You never spend time with me, I murmured, tears running down my cheeks. I told you it's just work, he said with great conviction. Lie, I am not cheating on you. Still, I couldn't get rid of the uneasy sensation I had. Larry was not the man I had with. He looked to be hiding something, was chilly and aloof. Not knowing what to do, though I love Larry, I couldn't live like this. I choose to start looking. Had to learn for myself if Larry was going to let me know what was happening. First, I checked his phone while he was showering, though I felt bad for violating his privacy. I needed answers. 
Though I looked for any odd calls or messages, I came onto something that made my heart sink. Larry had been looking for flats. Was he going to be leaving my side? I brought it up with him. Larry, why do you search for flats? You intend to be abandoning me. He seemed astonished. Not quite, Lily, I was only observing. I intended not to be abandoning you. Then why were you looking? With my voice shaking, I asked. I don't know, Lily, he murmured, hardly whispering. I simply need some space. I decided one day to bring up it with my mother. She has always been my friend, the one I turn to in trying circumstances. Mom, I continued, I have no idea what to do. Larry has undergone changes. He is no more the same person. My mother listened with worry edged on her face. Lily, she added, you will still find yourself adjusting. You couple recently, a life together takes time to create. I wanted to believe her, but this was only a phase and that things would turn around. Deep down, though, I sensed more was involved. I sensed Larry hiding something. I tried to ignore the feeling, persuade myself mom was right, but the nagging voice in the back of my mind persisted, reminding me something was off all the time. Three weeks later, I plucked the bravery to walk up to Larry. I said, staring him in the eye, I need a job. He appeared astonished. You want to work, he questioned, arsing an eyebrow. I nodded. Yeah, Larry, I have to act. I cannot just lounge about my house all day. After some contemplation, he answered, I can provide you a job at my foundation. We assist young people in trying circumstances. Interested? I found myself startled. Larry's work with children was well known and I had always loved what they accomplished. Indeed, I said without thinking twice. I'd love to. Dealing at the foundation was like a breath of fresh air. I was engaged in meaningful work and busy. I met children who were tenacious and strong. Those who had gone through more than any child ought to. Though terrible, it was also inspirational. The work kept me occupied and served to divert my attention from the issues at home. Larry and I were having trouble, but at least during the day I had another object of concentration. Though emotionally taxing and demanding, the task was worthwhile. I believed I was changing things. I was joyful for the first time in a long time. I still felt something was wrong though, even then. Larry was behaving odd and aloof. Though I couldn't identify what it was, I sensed something was off and resolved to find out. My heart full of questions and uncertainty, I made the decision to engage a private investigator. Was Larry cheating on me? I wanted to know. It addressed my peace of mind as much as my pride. Constant uncertainty was intolerable, always wondering what had gone wrong. We signed a prenup prior to our marriage as well. Should Larry be cheating, it would be more than simply a betrayal. A costly error as well. I came upon a detective agency in the city run under Tyler's name. Ex-cop, seasoned veteran with a keen eye and a no-nonsense attitude, he was. I told him my tale and my doubts. He paid attention, his face expressionless. I'll do my best, Lily, he remarked when I was done. But I'm not able to guarantee anything. Your husband is doing a great job of keeping it secret if he is cheating. I nodded, grasping. Tyler, I just need to know. I need to know one way or another. I recall the day he returned to turn in his report. His face was austere, his eyes sympathetic. I apologize, Lily, he said. I looked for no proof your husband is seeing another woman. I experienced an unusual mixture of hope and letdown. Though another side of me was annoyed, another of me was happy Larry wasn't cheating. Why had he left if he wasn't cheating? He was hiding what? Are you sure, Tyler? Asked my voice just above a whisper, I asked. There is hardly anything at all. Tyler gave his head a shake. Lie, I'm sorry. I understand you were not looking for this kind of hearing. I owe Tyler thanks and paid him for his work. I suffered great loss as I saw him go. More questions than answers, I returned where I had begun. One day a new guy entered the charity event I was working on. 
His name was John. He looked good and had a smile that would brighten the space. He was intelligent, fast wit, and a cute thinker. He was humorous and had a sense of fun that would make everyone chuckle. With his sharp good looks and chisel features, he exuded a famous actor. He was, all told, my perfect man. Still, I felt uncomfortable even though I was pulled to John. His arrival felt overly ideal, too handy. Larry and our prenup kept me thinking. Should I be discovered cheating, I would have to pay a staggering $7 million. Could John be a trap Larry created to get me? I chose to pay Tyler, the private investigator I had past experience with. I urged him to look at John and see whether he knew Larry. Tyler agreed to represent John and began researching his background and relationships. He trailed along, observed his motions and interactions. Tyler was exhaustive, not skipping a detail. I attempted to avoid John in the interim. It was challenging, particularly given his effable and appealing demeanor. I must exercise caution, though. Not when so much was at risk could I afford to fall into a trap. John asked me one day to coffee. I hesitated, though another part of me was terrified, anxious about what Tyler may find. I wanted to say yes to better get to know him. John, I responded, attempting to keep my voice calm. I would love to. But right now I am really busy, perhaps at another moment. John appeared let down but did not press. Sure, Lily, he responded, a little loss of smile evident. I also experienced remorse at another period. Should I be mistaken? What if John was simply a decent man and I was allowing my doubts to sour something wonderful? Not until I was certain, though, could I afford the chance. Five days later, Tyler arrived to provide his findings. His face was austere, his eyes steely. I'm sorry, Lily, he continued, but your doubts were valid. John works for your spouse. Anger at Larry for trying to trap me, relief that I hadn't fallen for it, and sadness that John wasn't who I thought he was set off a range of emotions. Above all, though, I was driven for vindication. I was not seeing things, my doubts were legitimate. Thanks, Tyler, I murmured, my voice catching with feeling. You really have done a great job. I experienced an unusual closure as I saw Tyler go. I had sidestepped a bullet and avoided an expensive error. But I also felt as though I had lost something, the concept of the ideal man and the possibility for one's finding love. Though it was a difficult truth to swallow, I refused to let it depress me. I surpassed that in strength. I resolved myself to keep on and rediscover pleasure. I only needed someone who was true and honest. I did not require a perfect man. And I was determined to discover it regardless of what. I decided to approach John differently instead of packing right then. While keeping my behavior above reasonable so Larry would have no cause to accuse me of anything, I decided to play along and befriend him. But John sensed something more for my warmth. Thinking he had me missled, he began to unwind. The irony was he was the one being acted upon. But I kept him out on the secret. I kept up the show and presented a friendly front since I couldn't risk his sprinting back to Larry. I decided one day to raise the ant. Lunch with John sounded like a laid-back conversation about volunteer work when I invited him. Thinking he was making progress, he smiled smugly and accepted. We settled in the cafe in silence. So, John. I said, how are you finding the charity work? He shrugged with a confident gaze in his eyes. That's fantastic. Different but rather good. And Larry? I asked, attempting to keep a calm voice. What do you have of him? John turned startled. Larry asked, he is good, I suppose. For why? I waved trying to seem laid back. Just wondering, he seems a bit of a mystery too. John chuckled, visibly relieved. Yeah, he can be challenging to understand. We kept talking about life and work and I made care to keep my tone neutral so as not to give him any cause to be dubious. I kept up the nice behavior but never straying from the rules in the next days. I was constantly wary and alert. Though when I was ready to play for now it was a dangerous game. 
John looked at me seriously one day at one of our lunch meetings. You know, I have been considering, John said. I arched an eyebrow, then felt a cold run down my spine. Regarding what? I sought. He gave a shrug, clearly uncomfortable. On us. Regarding that between us. My pulse stopped momentarily. I had been fearing this exactly. I graced a smile under Juris. And what then do we possess, John? He fixed me with an eager glance. We certainly have something unique. I began to feel ashamed. But exactly as I had intended John was slipping into my trap. Still, it was improper, it felt bad. I have to maintain performing as well as continuing playing the game. I so gave John a phony smile, plastered on my face. Indeed, John, I responded, my voice just a whisper. We do have something very unique. And the trap was set. The game was under motion just like that. However, at what expense? With Larry, the cold battle at home was as frigid as ever. Every now and then we would run across one other, exchange icy welcomes, and then withdraw to our own sides. He stayed at his flat most evenings saying it was more handy for his job. One Friday afternoon, I gave John a ring. I invited him over to my house, lacing my voice with warmth as phony as his paperwork. I was probably at last ready to yield to his advances. Poor chap, he was most incorrect. John was met not by a beautiful housewife, but rather by my former classmate, now a strict-faced police officer when he entered my residence. John's astonishment was worth every bit of it. John's paperwork were reviewed by the officer, and as expected, they were as bogus as a $5 note. It now came time for me to act. I presented John with options. He could choose to work for me instead of sticking with Larry, and deal with the fallout from his false paperwork. John's eyes flicked between me and the policeman, then nodded following a period of quiet. He signed on to my offer. Larry, checkmate. That's when the actual game started. Right now, Larry's pawn was on my side. But I knew Larry was a clever man, this was only the start. He would not drop without struggle. I watched John quite closely in the next days. Though he agreed, I realized I couldn't totally believe him. He constituted a wild card, a possible hazard. But for now he was a helpful one. I called John to my office one day. We need to talk, I remarked with a sobering tone. He glanced at me, a trace of discomfort in his gaze. About what? About Larry, I said. I have to know everything, his strategies, plans, everything. John nodded then paused. Okay, I will tell you everything. Having my insider, my response was ready. Still, this was only the start. The actual struggle still lay ahead. Larry wouldn't drop without a fight, hence I had to be ready. This was battle, not only a game these days. And in battle, survival alone governs. There are no laws. Days stretched into weeks and my anxiety was mounting. To demonstrate Larry I wasn't the pushover he assumed me to be, I wanted to confront him. I turned to Tyler once more and he offered some guidance. Push Larry, he advised. Make him believe you have hooked him into your trap. Though I was ready to start the game, it was a gamble. John and I thus arranged a picture session. Like evidence of an affair, we positioned ourselves in ways that could be considered as compromising. We were cautious though we retained the original pictures in which everything was as naive as a Friday school picnic. I gave John the pictures when they were ready. I passed Larry the envelope saying, Give these to him. Let him come to his own decisions. John stared at me, clearly worried. Are you sure about this? He said. Once you start this, there is no going back. I know, I said, speaking deliberately. I'm also ready. Larry was glowing at dinner the very next day. He felt he had the upper hand he had captured me. Still, he said nothing about it. I knew it was coming. I was ready, I wasn't worried. Tyler was on the case, searching Larry's dirt for all the required proof. I trusted him, he performed well at his work. At last Tyler gave me a call. With a satisfied voice, he said, Larry's relaxed and has let his guard down. 
I have him. Pictures, videos, everything, all the evidence I could find. I started to become excited. Buddha answered, a smile growing across my face. Let's knock him down. But not yet I avoided Larry. I aimed for him to believe he was winning. I was interested in the expression on his face upon realizing he had been duped. I waited then. I assumed the role of the conscientious wife, waiting till Larry moved. I was ready because I knew it was on approach. I knew this was the climax. The time was running towards family supper. Oddly, I relaxed. I was ready. The meal took place in Larry's parents' opulent luxury mansion, a vast estate radiating old wealth. Larry was there, naturally performing the ideal husband and son. But I knew the truth, shortly everyone else would also. Larry cleared his throat and got up, a smug smirk on his face, midway through the main course. He said, looking squarely at me, I have something to say. Like he was holding a winning hand, he took out a set of pictures of me with John and dumped them on the table. Proof, he shouted, his voice bursting with success. Of the adultery of my wife. The chamber went quiet. Though I could see everyone staring at me, I did not foulish. I came ready for this. I coolly got up and looked at Larry. Yes, I answered, my voice steady. Though he's not my lover, I know this man. Larry, you hired an actor to frame me. I reached for my phone and set play. John's voice admitting everything filled the room. Larry's smile dimmed and his eyes grew shocked. But I still had to finish. I grabbed my own collection of pictures and films, proof of Larry's affairs. I dumped them on the table. Larry, what about these? My voice cool as I asked. Can you clarify these? Larry stammered, trying to refute it. But the data was clear-cut. The features of his parents become stone. Finally speaking up were my parents who had been silent until now. You grumpy brat. At Larry, my dad yelled. We trusted you with our daughter. This is how you treat us. Larry's mom was crying. How could you, Larry? She sighed. How could you do this to her to us? The results were quick. We filed for divorce. Furious by their son's lie, Larry's parents let him go from their business. His reputation was completely destroyed. For myself, I left with $7 million in pay. Larry is now furiously trying to put his life back together while I'm free. The silence and freedom from him are helping me. I prevail. Signed on Larry and prevailed. I outwitted him and performed his own game superior than his. And it feels right and good.